Didn't wanna see you when you came home Cause you always try to hurt me and that's so low When I talk to you about it, you're in defense mode Whoa, oh, 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 oh. How can we work on ourselves when you say no? Últimamente no entra hecho en la son comparecencia Un pasito más para la indulgencia Un abogado por si acaso y si el juez está de paso Termina dictaminando la sentencia Primo presunto de inocencia Pasito para atrás por si nos arrepentimos Si nadie es culpable pues culpamos al destino con él Si el juez está de paso, termina dictaminando la sentencia. Salimos presuntos de inocencia. Pasito para atrás, por si nos arrepentimos. Si nadie es culpable, pues culpamos al destino con él.
Under the pressure, I lost my temper. I said something foolish. Did I go and ruin this? When it started to feel so real, could feel it running, running through my lonely veins. When I started to heal, could see myself. Loving, loving for the rest of my days mm. No, I don't want to be alone So late at night
remember Those memories are better than gold I let you down, I know When it started to feel so real Could feel it running, running Through my lonely veins When I started to heal Could see myself loving, loving For the rest of my days my love to know how I feel All the nights I feel so alone Asking myself if the world is real I get a text message Nothing matters that's drawn back to Whatever I think I'm losing my mind Oh Thank you. 
Baby, I'm calling for you, and I'm stuck in the loop.
All right, folks, I apologize. We seem to have uh, some technical difficulties. Anyways, I'm Saul Artiris, a former LOL Varsity player, and welcome back to tonight's stream. So tonight's match features our ECPI Rams, the blue team, versus Catawba College Red Hawks. Now, if you are a current student at ECPI University and would like to try out for the Rams, please go to ecpi.edu slash esports slash trials and follow the six easy steps to schedule your trial today. Thanks, Solark Tears. We have five ECPI players taking the field today. And first up is our top laner, Payne Remains, a newcomer to the Rams. He's been known to play a few nasty tank top laners, uh, which happens to be my specialty. He's studying for his associates of science in cybersecurity. All right, and next up we have Viper. He's a returning veteran and whom I've personally played with along in the past. Viper has been known to play extremely aggressive junglers, which is my favorite role. He's getting his Bachelor of Science in Cybersecurity. Next up, we've got our mid laner, Krillin. 
Another newcomer to the Rams. He's actually a support main, but is stepping into the mid role on this team. He's going for his bachelor's in cybersecurity. All right. And then we got Wanna Be There, our returning ADC, which is attack damage carry from last season. We're looking to him for explosive outplay. So watch out. He's going for a Bachelor of Science in Cybersecurity. And last but certainly not least, we've got our support player, Grim. Grim returns as the trusted and wise support for the Team Blue roster, and he's going for his associates in Mechatronics. All right, so purely, how do you feel about today's matchup? Uh, yeah, I'm pretty excited. I won't lie. This I believe this will be my first time getting uh, the opportunity to spectate uh, a game up from this roster. I've, ha I've had a decent amount of experience uh, spectating the Crimson team, but I believe this is the first time I'll be spectating and casting a game from the blue team. So I'll be interested to see how some of these newcomers fare on this team. Obviously, we I sort of have a good idea of what to expect from veterans like Viper. I've played alongside him myself as well and uh, and, you know, sort of know how he likes to play and how he likes to, uh, you know, utilize his, his picks and, and his jungle role to, to win the game. But I'll be interested to see how, how some of these newer players fare. Absolutely. Purely, you know, say you got to risk it to get the biscuit. You know, those hyper aggressive plays, they can be risky, but they can also be very rewarding. Yeah, definitely. So sorry to interrupt you. I was just going to no, say, I've no. noticed, um, you know, we have want to be there as the ADC and, uh, I've seen a little bit of his plays, and honestly, I'm looking for some crazy penna kills. You know, that would be great to see. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I think that currently with the the way the meta is right now, you know, AD carries have a lot more agency early on with with these lethality items being so strong. We're seeing a lot of the AD carries that are able to build lethality um, being picked right now, and that just means that you're going to see a lot more skirmishes early, right? A lot more power up front as opposed to. Uh, some of our more recent previous metas where you play two super hyperscalers and do nothing until, you know, two, three items, which uh, definitely got a little stale um, pretty mm -hmm. quick. So I'm, I'm definitely excited to see uh, some some action down in the bot lane. I mean, I like we were talking about, Pain Remains playing tanks up in the top lane. Typically, you know, when you see stuff like that, if he likes to play tanks a lot, you're going to weak side your, your top laner who's going to play tanks because he's able to absorb a lot of that pressure playing a tank and, and allow for uh for viper to maybe maybe sit bot a little bit more you know with his aggressive jungle picks make some action happen maybe get the bot lane ahead i guess we'll have to see like i said this is my first time watching so this is all speculation right absolutely yes and trades galore bot lane that i'm expecting and uh you said scaling <laughs> cough cough is really insult <laughs> yeah and by for sure. it right now yeah oh my <laughs> goodness that, that champ is crazy so we'll have to see we'll have to see i can't believe he got buffed on the most recent patch actually yeah i know <laughs> um and another thing i wanted to mention so uh you know with uh grim what, what kind of ex uh, support champions do you think he'll be playing alongside want to be there just out of curiosity so Grim is actually the other player on the on this team that I'm fairly familiar with because I got to play a little bit alongside him as well as sort of in tandem with him when I was still back on the team. And Grim is very un you know unpredictable because of how flexible his champ pool is. I think this guy is very dedicated. You know he's he's a grinder. If there's whatever is strong at the moment, you know he'll he'll practice and and put in the hours to to get good and make sure that he's able to. Uh, provide you know whatever flexibility the team needs i think so the support pool right now especially um is the most diverse i mean obviously we're going to see more picks based on what people are comfortable playing you know what are their strongest individual champs as opposed to maybe so much you know like what's super meta but i think the support pool right now is the most diverse in terms of what you can make work in a team composition um just be especially because of the support item right now how many different options you have um, since they, you know, since they changed the support items and the way it works and stuff, it's a lot more flexible and it allows for a lot of different picks. So I'll be honest, I have not a single clue what Grimm is looking to play tonight. I think it'll largely be dependent on uh, what the rest of his team needs and also what is a good pairing with um, with his bot, you know, with his bot lane. I uh, want to be there. So. Absolutely. And well said. So I got one more word for you purely. Yep. Smolder. Thoughts on that? Ooh. <laughs> is smolder enabled right now for the for this tournament i don't know because i know it's not enabled in pro league just yet um i have played it like two games of it i think 
And I'm not sure. I mean, it's it's definitely I think Smolder has, um, you know, its place. And in, in I think it could be meta at some point. I think although, you know, like what we we're talking about with the lethality being very strong right now, I think this champ is definitely more of a hyperscaler. You know, getting those stacks is super, super important. Um, if you're familiar with the champ at all, farming with your Q, hitting champions with your Q, you stack up your passive. Once you get to 225 stacks, you get like a mini elder buff. So if it gets to that point in the game, and you're able to have uptime in fights. I mean, you're basically Thanos. It's super, super powerful. Um, so yeah, I mean, I guess it's possible we might see Smolder. I would imagine that it would it'll be a little bit too slow, maybe for the kinds of games that we're expected to see. But I mean, it, it's possible that it gets brought out. I don't think it'll be banned. I would be very surprised if Smolder right. was drawing bans at this point. I don't think when it's even enabled in Pro League that it'll see um you know in professional play i don't think it'll draw bands either like i said i think it's a little bit too slow at the moment um but it's definitely something that we could see if if uh, wannabe there's been practicing it well said purely speaking of bands i got another word for you atrox atrox yes atrox is quite scary right now and i think um again it'll really just depend on on what I like we were talking about in the in when we were introducing the players pain remains is a tank player atrox tanks worst nightmare no one likes to play tanks into atrox so i mean i wouldn't be surprised to see a ban maybe from ecpi towards atrox atrox is also just like a very popular uh you know top laner right now has lots of different builds although i think you know lethality um recently has been very very strong on him even with the changes to his w um, you know, trying to they tried to add some AP scaling in there to prevent him from building lethality just to make, you know, his scaling of his other abilities a little bit worse. But it's just so explosive with the damage and the healing that you have. I mean, you can turn a fight in an instant with Aatrox with with how, you know, how much explosive power he has. Um, and so I think that it's definitely something that ECPI should be concerned about. I think Aatrox is probably one of the priority picks that we will be looking um, to see from either of these teams. I mean, if Pain Remains plays it, Maybe they'll be uh, maybe they'll be looking to pick it up for themselves. So we'll have to see. Absolutely. Well said, purely. Um, yeah, there's a saying I always say uh, Aatrox is Aatroxing when he 1v5s an enemy team just being slightly ahead. So, um, so we were talking about Pain Remains, how he seems to love to play tank top laners. One tanky champion in the top, I think, that might be able to contend with Aatrox could be Alawi or Killawi, the Tenta Killer. What do you think of Alawi? Um, I won't lie. I think Alawi, since the item changes, um, it's sort of like it's an interesting spot that she's in because I think her tank build got stronger. Um, you know, with with Iceborne Gauntlet getting stronger and just being a cheaper overall, very um, you know, stats efficient item. I think it's a pretty decent pick, but obviously no longer have Divine Sunder, which was like one of her other, her more bruiser uh, style build, you know, more of her tank killer style build. Um, but I think she can be quite annoying. I mean, Holebreaker's still in the game, although it is in a much weaker state. I think you'd probably, if you go Alawi now, would build some sort of Iceborne Gauntlet into Lethality uh, type build. But I mm -hmm. believe the draft has already actually been, you know, done ahead of time. So we're looking at both these drafts already as we head into game. Uh huh. I'm looking at it too as we speak. Uh, ooh, uh, both sides appear to be pretty scary. I mean, on one end we've got okay, yes, Vipers playing Nocturne, and you know what I'm thinking? I'm thinking of the Hexplate item where it, uh, I believe it reduces the ultimate cooldown, and you can just yeah. spam ganks left and right with that item. Oh yeah, and it also like supercharges you right after you cast your ult, which is yes. perfect with uh, with how Nocturne likes to play. So it's quite a steroid, I will admit. And uh looks yeah, we got a pretty good safe pick on top. Got Garen. Okay, yeah, Garen, you know, kind of strong consistently. Uh good single target damage and you know, the crowd control with the silence. I like that. And yeah. Like we've got Krillin on Nico. I mean, you know, honestly, N Nico can be very deceptive, you know, especially uh, when people think it's some other champion or a minion or whatever, and then boom, you got the pop blossom all just stun crowd control. <laughs> can be quite intense. And we get, okay, we got Wannabe there on Kaiza or the Kaiser, as I call her. You know, you got some, you can do hybrid damage with Kaiza and you can definitely hyper carry. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with the full AP. I'm sure you are the full AP Kaiza build where they oh, yeah. spam the W and you do half their health bar in one shot. 
Yeah, and it and then it refunds almost all the cooldowns, so you can cast it again in the next two seconds. Yeah, yeah, it's it's borderline criminal, honestly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then of course you got Nami. Okay, Grim went with Nami. That's a pretty solid pick. You know, you got a mixture of healing and crowd control with the bubble. I mean, to me, honestly, in my opinion, Nami is kind of like Soraka, but a little less healing and a little more utility. Um, yeah, and of course the old the tidal wave. Mm, it's all right. You can dodge it sometimes, but you know, there's already somebody CC'd by somebody else. It's good lockdown. Yeah. I think, I think it'll be most useful probably in this game to maybe try and counter and engage with the Kletal, you know, from the other yes. side. I think that this, this other team, uh, it's Kata, Kataba, I believe Kataba, mm -hmm. um, the Hawks, their team, their team comp looks pretty scary. I'm most concerned, I think, uh, for ECPI's bot lane, they definitely are going to need to play very smart. Um, yeah. In this lane, you know, Kaisa Nami is an interesting pairing. It can definitely work out. I mean, Kaisa has some explosive power. I'll be definitely curious to see her runes in this game as well. Um, if she's going just like a normal AD build, normally Kaisa builds, um, you know, lethal tempo these days. But Halo Blades is something that can definitely still be in there. And I can see a Halo Blades with Nami as your support being extremely, extremely explosive, you know, like catch you off guard type damage um, coming out of the Kaisa early on. But in general, I think Samir Rakan just hard wins this 2v2. Yeah. Um, I mean, you can try and use your, you know, your ranged advantage, you know, levels one through three um, with Kaisa and Nami. But I think after that, you've got to play extremely, extremely um, respectful of the Samira uh, Rakan because we, I mean, we all yes. have played against a fed Samira and that's, that's no fun at all. No, it, absolutely not purely. I mean, t in uh, my opinion, Samir is like an ADC version of Katarina. Like, just the old itself is just massively inflicting damage. And on top of that, you got a lot of life still going on. She's got that ability that can like cancel out, you know, what's coming at her. Samir yep. can be very busted. And then you got Rakan on top of that. I mean, yeah, yeah, you definitely want to play, you want to tread lightly on that one for sure. Yeah, and and I mean the Nico ult will be you know very good if we if uh, Krillin can find some good engages with it that'll be especially good against how short range um this comp is from Kataba. But I think at the same time you know the Silas can steal the Nico ult, which is definitely something that they've also got to be uh, concerned about in in return because it's the same kind of thing for ECPI's um, comp. You know, also pretty short range. Uh, so I think it'll really just come down to execution in these fights. I mean. ECPI has a very good dive comp. You know, if they can get on top of the Samira or on top of the Silas and just one shot them, you know, with a yes. Nocturne Nico combo type type deal, which is a very, very strong combo, then I think we could definitely see, um, you know, see some some explosive team fights. Yes, yes. And all right. It looks like we're already off now. Remember, everyone, the Rams are the blue team and Kataba is the red team. Just keep that in mind. So... Another thing I wanted to pick your brain at purely is uh, since you mentioned that lockdown, Nico Nocturne, perfect scenario, since I honestly think we're going to probably focus on the Samira, obviously, um, especially if she gets a little ahead, if we can get a good Nocturne alt on the Samira, and then if uh, Nico follows up. I think we'll have a pretty good situation. If we get if we get Samira out of the fight. We can just, you know, massacre the rest. But that's definitely going to have to be the play. Yeah, I mean, I think the 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 idea, you know, the Garen into the Kled is definitely sort of like trying to keep him contained, you know, up in that top lane. You know, it's a decent matchup, I'm pretty sure, for Garen. And um, you can obviously see the idea behind his ultimate and his silence being able to prevent Kled from doing Kled things. Yeah, Kled things, exactly. <laughs> yes, uh, Kled is like a redneck hecarim in a way to me <laughs> yeah yeah as a hecarim main of what i'm showing my age here but what 12 years since season two yeah yeah cled when cled came out i got pretty crazy with cled too it's like you know what cled can just go in do his thing and get out kind of like how hecarim can do <sighs> looks yeah, like bot lane's playing safely uh not sure quite about mid just yet. Ooh. Actually, interestingly enough, I just noticed this Garen took grasp, which is not tip, you know, pretty atypical of Garen. Right. Um, we're gonna see Cled go for aggressive trade here in the top lane. Mm -hmm. Looks like yeah. Speaking of that, he just procked his undying grasp, and yeah, you know, I'm, I'm kind of torn. It depends, you know. Uh, 
if it's like a more tankier top you're against and not Kled, I can see grass because you can proc it more safely. But I can see why you would probably feel more comfortable going Conqueror versus Kled as Garen. So I can see where you're coming from with that. Yeah, I mean, in short trades, you know, it'll obviously favor the Garen, right? If you can, right. but it's just difficult with the mobility that Kled has. Yes. Um, to, to, to take a short trade and then get out without taking too much damage. Precisely. And since you mentioned that, there was a quality of life um, patch that kind of buffed Kled in a way when his Q, like that, that Q when he extends, it has a longer range now. Interesting. So something to keep in mind. All right. Oh, yikes. Looks like Silas is doing the, the, uh, the E, the, What's it like? Uh, like Camille does, does an E dash and then jumps on Nico. Yeah. That's kind of what's going on here. A little trade, All right? But you know what's interesting is the uh, the bot lane is at full health on our side, so that's a good sign so far. Yeah, this Samir has been playing pretty far back for how many times her Rakan is jumping in to you know to exactly. look for these Ws. Yeah, she's uh she's not following up. Hmm. Well, we're going to see an uh -oh. early gank from Viper, though. That's a beaut. Oh, look at that. Gorgeous flash from Viper. We got first. Yes, we got first blood. All right, Rams. Good job, Viper. As a fellow jungler, I commend you. That was a gorgeous gank. So now we got the top lane a little bit ahead. Oh, looks like Zach is going in to try and even it out. Yikes. <laughs> now, was that a double flash? Yes, they did. They it both was. flashed for that. All right. Yeah, I was pretty unlucky. Even with the Zach E missing there, of course, you know, with the with the Q right. able to knock, you know, bring uh, Krillin back. Knock exactly. Him into the you know, they were like, well, I'm already here. I might as well try and finish what we started. So. Yeah. Well, and speaking of meta picks right now, too, Zach is very, very strong. You can pretty much flex him into multiple lanes, too. You know, if your team's able to do that, um, you know, I've seen him top. I've seen him mid, obviously jungle. I haven't seen yeah. really I haven't really seen any uh, Zach support, you know, since he's come back sort of into the into the meta. But um, I'm sure you could do it if you really wanted to. I mean, he's, <laughs> yeah, he's if you're ambitious enough. Him. I mean, I've seen Pantheon support ran. I can see Zach support ran, honestly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The blob is nothing to trifle with. Yeah, especially now. Yeah, definitely scary. Okay. Uh, yep. Looks like top lane is doing pretty good. Just. Kind of chilling, letting Kled push a little bit, getting all those W stacks. Uh, what do we got here in Bob? Nami's a little hurt, but looks like Wannabe there is still perfect condition. It's going to get a little bit more interesting once uh, Viper gets to level 6. And look at that, we're already getting a cam drink, or attempting to. Yep, looks like Zach's going for the, um, uh, what do you call the Void Grubs, that's what they are. So I had to think a minute there. So, for those that are watching, just to explain, the Void Grubs um, are basically like stacks that help you destroy towers more effectively. And speaking of leaving the Void Grub pit, looks like a little gank going on there at top lane. I think they kind of failed that. Yep, Kled ulted, uh, but they couldn't follow through, you know? You just garen just got close to that tower all he's got to do is q and w and say goodbye <laughs> yeah and, and to me that seemed very very ambitious from uh Kataba. like i understand the idea you know zach's right. already up there he's trying to be efficient with his pathing but at the same time you know garen look at the wave right the garen right. is slow pushing towards this cled i mean if, if that zach just clear i mean he doesn't have anything to clear top side but you can see now he's going bot side if he had just immediately backed from grubs cleared his bot side then passed top you know, Pain Remains has to try and crash this wave, and that could have been a perfect, you know, gank timing for the Zac now. You know, exactly. they wasted, they wasted, uh, you know, the Kled ultimate, and, and I mean, they already don't have any sums, right? I mean, that that's one advantage that ECPI was able to get, as well as that first blood. They were able to get the, the Kled flash without burning uh, Pain Remains flash, so he has that flash advantage right now for another couple minutes. Precisely, purely, and I wholeheartedly agree with you that that was very early. I could see if they were like level 14 or above, but that was extremely ambitious considering the angle and how close to the tower that gank was. So uh, I'm going to take a gander and say there's Zach is probably going to try and gank bot at some point. 
In fact, that's exactly what's going to happen, apparently. But again, I mean, I'm not the biggest fan of this. I mean, I don't, I don't see want to be there in Grim, you know, getting so aggressive to the point where Zach's gonna be able to find an angle here. You know what I mean? It's been, you know, right. pretty much only um, Samir and Rakan, you know, looking for engages um, in this bot lane. And so I just don't think they're really gonna give Zach the opportunity to capitalize on this. They're just gonna farm under their tower. Um, mm -hmm. You can see even Viper here, you know, helping yeah. making sure Pain Remains is able to shove out so he can get a base in because. You know, if if Zach had done, if he had gone bot first, he would be you know topside right now, looking possibly for an opportunity to gank Pain. Um, who, who Precisely. Was oh, speaking of Zach in that gank, yep, that's exactly what's going. Oh no, 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 no. Oh boy, that is not good. All right. Nocturnal used here, but the bot lane being dead. Maybe Viper just wants to try and find the Zach who's low HP. Yep. Oh, that is so unfortunate. Just look at that. Oh, no. Oh, I'm so sorry, Viper. I know you wanted to get that blob and get back at him. You'll get a chance. Don't worry. Yeah, that was I a really good try. Wait, he's coming up. Oh, what's going on here? Yeah, the Rakan's deflecting him. Yeah. And and the thing is, you know, the blob, Zach hasn't uh, executed his passive where he goes in his four little bloblets yet, so... You know, when Viper manages to get that at least, then he's got to contend with the four blobs too. So, yeah, the thing to keep in mind that's just another reason why Zach is kind of busted. <laughs> well, we're seeing a play though in the bot lane. Yes, oh, be there. perfect bubble. Look at that bubble. Yeah, that was a huge bubble. That was a yes. great W to cancel the back from Samir yes. and immediately pops the R. No hesitation at all. That was gorgeously executed. All right, so now we got bot lane a little bit back in the game. I still don't quite know the status of mid. It looks like the CS is about even. Um, probably won't see a play just yet. I feel like Vipers, you know, wanting either top to get pretty ahead or just play it safe with bot and keep bot in the game too. So let's just see what happens. Looks like both junglers are in the middle between top and mid lane though. So, oh, I think Viper's about to make a play. Coming top lane. Oh, here you go. We got a gank going on in mid. All right, Nami with the wave. Oh, Silas stole the wave. Are they going to get Rakan? Rakan flashes. What do we got here? Oh, oh, right. oh, beautiful root. Will that ignite finish the Silas, though? Will it? Nope. Wow, look at those close calls purely. Just look how close they all almost died. That is incredible. Yeah, and that's honestly a great turnout for the Rams there because they were not advantaged in that fight at all. The support had first move for uh, Kadoba there. You know, the Rakan was there ready to go in, but his team did not really follow up in a couple of really great routes, followed by a couple of great ults uh, from the Rams as well. Make Absolutely. it that it's a positive trade for them. However, want to be there in some trouble against the Silas. Uh-oh. That's a beautiful bubble once again. Grim is on the top dollar with these bubbles, I'm telling you. Oh, no. oh, okay. Looks like we're going to kill the blobs. Are we going to finish the rest? Ooh. Yeah, that was Silas doing Silas things, unfortunately. Yeah, and, and that that is one of the most annoying parts about Zach as well. You're investing time, you know, and, and attacks into those blobs to make sure you can confirm the kill. But that's attacks not going into the, the, the rest of the team that's still up and hitting your, your team. So exactly. it's just like, it's such a hard fight to win, especially without the Nico there. I'm actually surprised that the Rams opted in to taking that fight. I mean, I think maybe they thought after that positive trade on mid lane that they were good to take these grubs, but without the Nico ult and, you know, a lot of the, the other uh, resources burned there, you know, like the Nami right. wave as well. It's a pretty difficult, you know, fight to take when, yes. you, when your comp is so reliant on these ultimates. Absolutely. I, I was going to agree with you 100% purely. I Definitely our side is very ult reliant, especially, you know, Nocturne and Nico all at the same time. Mwah, that is Chef's kiss right there. Oh, speaking of Nocturne, what do we got going here? Viper, okay. Oh, oh no, the Samir cancels out the wave, but we'll oh. ooh, flash on Samir. Okay. Well, we got the Rakan. That's still a good trade in my book. Zach is making his way down with the Silas, though. Viper's got to be careful not to overstay here. Yes. All right, get out. There you go. Good job, Viper. Oh, no. He stole his ult, though. You're going to see a, a Silas Nocturne ulting. That is pretty scary to think about. <laughs> All right. Yeah, an interesting... 
I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I was just going to say Viper went for the Eclipse first, not the Hex play, which is quite, yeah, I'm very curious about. I mean, Eclipse is a pretty, oh, as I say that, we're seeing Wannabe there. He overstayed, not Viper, but Viper Ooh. there for the response. They might be able to keep him alive here. All right, that was a beautiful ult by the Kaiser. Kept That shield kept her alive. Is Nico going to finish the, uh, yes, she did. She finishes the Rakan, but what's going on here? Oh, the Nico. Oh, yes. Beautiful. All right. Now we got to finish off the Zach. He's got no passive on his blobs. Looks like we got uh, we got our Garen teleporting in, but Samira popped off with that ult. All right. Let's get some kills in. Ult that Samira, Garen. Come on. Let's see it. Let's see it. Ignite it. Wait. Oh, I'm sorry. No, he doesn't have Ignite. No. Oh, no. This is painful. This is painful. Oh, I'm so sorry. Mm, that feels bad. Yeah, and, I mean, Zach is just, again, I mean, I think he's the big problem in this fight. Obviously, the Nocturnal on the Silas did a lot of work to sort of yes. turn that fight initially. But, I mean, the Zach just, he has so much sustain. He's providing so much CC. I mean, that allowed for that Samira once she finally was able to join that fight to just go around, you know, use her passive to just dash around and, uh, you know, do tons of extra damage, you know, off the back of some of that Zach CC. And you can right. see in the end there, you know, Pain remains one, probably one auto away from killing the Samira, but Zach, too much CC prevents him from, from being able to finish off that kill. Exactly, which is very unfortunate. And I know we were mentioning Aatrox, you know, Aatroxing, doing Aatrox things. You know, I was thinking about Silas. That's how I see Silas too. You know, Silas is like a a squishier AP version of Aatrox simply because of the W. That Kingmaker, those heals are incredible. I mean, anything harder than that, it could be Va Vladimir. You know, that's all I can think of. <laughs> yeah, it, it's especially frustrating too with um, with how low the cooldowns get, you know, once you get some ability haste on Silas. I mean, right. the W being up so often, especially if you max it first, just makes, you know, extended fights like that and skirmishes so difficult to win against Silas. Yes, it's very unfortunate. And they and they got the comp just made for Silas, too. If, if you think about it, just Zach alone can keep Silas just chunking health and getting health at the same time. But uh, we got we still got a pretty scary comp, too. You know, if we can just if we can get a Nocturne ult and a Nico ult around the same time in a team fight and follow through, we can get a lot of pretty devastating results against them. Oh, yeah, I'm definitely not counting out the Rams yet. I think it's really going to come down to, you know, some good communication between Viper and Krillin to get multi-man, you know, a Nocturne with a Nico over the top of it. I think that is their win condition um, yes. quite, quite, quite literally. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, the, the, the Garen, I think, is going to have a hard time, you know, without those two pieces you know, being enabled first, you know, having that Nocturne right. and the Nico going first will allow, will create space for the Garen to get in there and do his thing, you know, maybe assassinate someone with the R. But I think yes. unless that's able to happen, Garen's going to have a really hard time playing out these fights. Yes, that is true. And it looks like we got Viper in that middle bush. Oh, man, I miss playing with Viper. He, he is something else. I think he's going to make a good bot. Yes, he's going to make the bot lane play. Nocturne ults onto the enemy team. He's going to lock down the Samir. Did we get a bubble? We got a bubble on Samir. Samir is dead. Yes. All right. Now we're going to finish off for calm. We got, we, oh, nope. There it comes to Zach. Zach's going to crowd control. Oh, my goodness. Can we kill the Zach? Will we <laughs> avenge Viper? We will not. But that was a beautiful trade and a gorgeous shutdown on the Samira. Yeah, I mean, the Zac is already so tanky at this point, too. But that was a great play. And the bubble as well is just the icing on the cake there to secure that uh, that kill in the Samira. They also yes. burned a lot there. I mean, the, the Rakan used Ignite, used his ultimate. Um, Samira, uh, that was perfect timing, too, because Samira uh, sums were not quite back off cooldown. You can see they're coming up just about now. Um, yes. So that was a great timing from Viper to punish that. Absolutely. And like I said, those bubbles from Grim, those Nami bubbles, I'm telling you, they have been on point all game. Like... I'm actually very impressed because, you know, that skill shot is very slow. I mean, it's not Morgana level slow, but most people can avoid a bubble. But Grim is just tossing those bubbles at the perfect time when there's already a level of CC. It's just beautiful. Oh, McCrillin getting greedy with his back. Uh -oh. They don't quite have the damage there just yet. He might be able to get out here. I Oh, oh no, no, no. That, that blob. Oh, no. Wait a minute, what's going on here? Mm, nah, not quite. Okay, looks like uh, we're gonna get a kill on Kled. Uh, oh yeah, he's dismounted. Will Viper follow? Yes, he will. He's gonna follow through and finish off. What's going on here? Oh, 
Oh, okay, okay. Oh, this is beautiful. Mm. Mm, that's that's Samira. Samira. Samira ult. Oh, now Silas is coming. Good bubble, keeping Zach out of it. Uh, he's channeling. He's gonna dive. He's gonna die and dive. Is he gonna blob? Get the blobs. Mm, I don't think we will. Yeah. Oof. That's unfortunate. But we have an opportunity to uh, come back from that. We're far from over. Let's see, we got here uh, less than a 2,000 gold difference. I mean, we can definitely come back from that for sure. Yeah, and objectives are still pretty even as well. You know, I'm not too, too concerned about it yet. But yeah. in general, I mean, I think if the Rams are not taking a fight on their own terms, it's probably not a good fight. Oh, that right. was... Look at that. That was a gorgeous... Did you see that deceptive execution there? Oh, I mean, yeah. gosh. And, and that was um Squall. That was the Squall proc. That's one of the newer items. It's... uh, I'll explain to the viewers. So the Squall is kind of like a timed burst proc. So... Once you do damage to somebody, it explodes in an area, and I think you get bonus gold if it kills. Is that right? Yeah. So if you, I believe it's twenty-five or thirty percent. If you do twenty-five or thirty percent of a champion's health bar, then there's like a three-second delay, and then it hits them with an extra, um, you know, strike of lightning, basically. Yes. Um, if they're already dead before the lightning strikes, then I believe they get some bonus gold on the kill. Yes. All right. Oh, beautiful. We got the Infernal Drake. That will definitely help us. A little extra AP and AD never hurts. Okay, we got a little Nico ult. Uh, it's not looking really good. I think we're just trying to get the heck out of here. Samir's popping off with that ult. Oh, no. Oh, boy. I have a feeling next round we'll have Samir banned, I hope. <laughs> yeah, and, and I mean, the Silas taking the Nico ult there, you know, our Nico not able to utilize her ult there, that was basically two completely different. I mean, obviously the call was, was uh, you know, everyone was on the same page about the call, get the dragon and run. Right. But it's just, it's so difficult in that position with, with uh, you know, with having a Kled, with having a Zach, right? Like someone is dying yes. on, the, on the way out of that. You know, there's no, no yes. way you're all getting out alive. No, absolutely not. That's, their comp is extremely all in. Yes, full of engage and disengage. All right. Well, uh, purely, I know you mentioned earlier. Uh, you questioned. Up. Oh, speaking of Viper, it looks like he's gonna get that kill on Kled. Is he gonna get the kill? No, is ult? So. No, his ult's on cooldown, and Kled is very close to getting back on his uh, Scarl the Lizard. <laughs> Yeah, Z uh, Nocturne doesn't quite have like the burst damage to be able to deal with Kled, um, especially with how fast you're able to remount off of uh, auto attacks on champions. I mean, that bar right. was at zero. He auto attacks Viper like what four or five times? Boom, he's remounted. So it's exactly. pretty difficult for for Viper to you know to solo, especially being down levels as well to to one v one the Kled here. Yes, absolutely. Oh no, what do we got here? Looks like Silas was trying to roam or make a play and didn't go in his favor. And we've got our Garen going hard. He's going ham on that tower. He's going to proc that, probably do a few plates. Actually, no, we're past plates, aren't we? <laughs> yep. Okay. Rakan's doing Rakan things. Guess he thought he could keep him around for a gank because we got Zach, Samira, and Kled all thinking about going top. Is there going to be a top team fight? Looks like we're about to find out. Oh, looks like we got the ult. Nami is dead. Oh no. But Silas got killed. What we got here going on over? Okay. All right. Beautiful kill. Once again on Zach. That was an interesting trade. Was that a twofer? No, that was a three for two, wasn't it? Yeah. Right. Honestly, not not as bad as I thought it was going to go, though, for, for yeah. the Rams. I mean, the fact they're able to get two there is not terrible, especially right. being one of them being onto the Silas. I'm not sure if they got a shutdown for the Silas, but. Um, if yes. they did, you know, that that's that's quite big. I know. And uh, back in my mind purely, I'm actually I'm a little happy that we got the Chem Drake before they did, just so we get the extra healing and tenacity, because extra healing and tenacity on Silas and Samira is not a good thing. Yeah, no, it's it's uh you definitely don't need to give Zach and Silas more healing and tenacity. So. <laughs> right. I'm sure they already have, you know, runes and stuff to make it their healing even more annoying and obnoxious than it already is. Viper yes. going in, though, against three. Oh, my gosh. Viper went all ham. Oh, look at that Nami Oh, Oh, right. Didn't get canceled either. Oh, beautiful crowd control. Are they trying to disengage? Rakan's ulted. He's charmed. Our Nico. Oh, my gosh. They're going to try and kill her. 
Mm, oh, Nico. Oh, oh, you know what? Um, if uh, if Nico had the Zanias, that probably would have been a much different outcome. Yeah, and it's Very it's definitely something that's uh, that's changed a lot, you know, about you know build paths of these mages, especially the ones that like to be very aggressive, like Silas right. and Nico both. Zanius is a very expensive item now since the update, and uh, yes. you know they still try and build it, but usually it's not coming in until third, sometimes even fourth item, which makes you know if you're not the like I said, if you're not the one engaging, you're not taking the fight on your terms. If you're getting caught, um, it's just very very difficult to survive that, and unfortunately Nico. No sums up, doesn't have the rocket belt just yet. You know, went for opted right. for the storm surge first, which means that her mobility is very limited, you know, without right. flash, without rocket belt. So she tried to use the ult to, to survive that and, and get out, but not ends up using the ult and still dying anyways. So it's it's gonna be looking rough, I think, for this next dragon fight as well for the Rams. Yes. And uh just to elaborate, I mean, you know, defense is probably gonna be our best bet anyways. Um if we let them push. We let Nico disguise and do that beautiful execution that we witnessed about five minutes earlier. That could be a great start for a team fight. We can just kind of catch an opportunity here because it does look like there's about a 4,000 gold advantage so far, roughly. So we kind of want to play a little more defensively and just exploit any opportunities that we can moving forward. Yeah, and I mean, the, the lane assignments, too, from the Rams, uh, I'm not too sure. Maybe they're saying we're not, we're completely giving this dragon, which is, I'm assuming is the call. Um, right. But honestly, you know, no one was on that mid wave. I think, you know, the, the, the Nico needs to start looking for these opportunities, like you mentioned, to get into a flank position. So that way, when Nocturne turns off the light, she's in a position where she can use her ult and get onto multiple members of this... Uh, of this Kataba team, because if, if that's not the case, like we said, I mean, that's basically their only win condition for a fight at this point. Yeah, absolutely. And purely, I love the way you describe Nocturne's all literally turning off the lights, darkness. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Because <laughs> I mean, the Kaisa is strong. You know, if she's yeah. if she's given the opportunity, given space to be able to hit, you know, she can do a lot of damage. But a lot of these fights, you know, she's there. There's no threat for this the rest of this team. Oh, we're gonna see an engage though from the Rams. Are we gonna see a Nico out on this or what? We do see it, but I think it's a little late. It's a little bit late. Oh my gosh. Oh no. And just like that, game is over. Oh man. Yeah, unfortunately, if we had that Nico ult maybe half a second earlier, that could have been a totally different outcome. Yeah. And I won't lie, it happened. It caught me very off guard there. I was not expecting to see an engage, so maybe I, you know, I'd have to go back and look at it again. But right. I don't think the Nico again was quite in position there to follow up on, you know, on the Nocturne ult. Even if the Nocturne ult, you know, Viper going in there was a little right. crazy. If the Nico follows up on it, you know, something can something can happen. You know, I mean, you have the Kaisa right. with three items. That's maybe their best opportunity to look for a fight while all right. of them are grouped up like that. So, right. All right, we're going to go to break. All right, that was an unfortunate defeat. Both sides played very well, hoping to come back on the next round. What are your thoughts on that match, Purely? Well, I mean, I've got a couple thoughts. I think going into this game, too, you know, I like the idea of the composition from the Rams um, in that game. You know, I think both comps were actually pretty good. They had an identity. You know, they wanted to do the same thing. You know, it wasn't too disjointed from either team. But in terms of execution, it was a completely different story. I, I, you know, I really need to see the Rams looking to fight more together. You know, if we're not able to, you know, to combine a Nocturnal and an Eco ult on top of each other, finding multiple members of the team, you know, something's got to change in this next game. I also think the Garen ne needs to be swapped to something else. You know, if we're if we're saving the counter pick 
for top lane. We're picking Garen into Kled. We can't be going down 20, 30, 40 CS in lane um, because Garen just at the end of the day is not as useful as if we're playing, you know, an Orn or playing a, a Cassante or a Maokai or any tank that provides more CC in frontline, um, you know, for the team. You know, if we're not able to get meaningful advantages in the laning phase, I think we need to be picking something else in the top lane as well. I think bot lane went fine. I, I honestly think they played the 2v2 very well. Um, you know, Viper had some good looks in bot lane that ended up working out. You know, maybe a couple of times they got a little, you know, over eager. They stayed a little bit too long. But in general, I think, not, you know, that was fine in the bot lane. So. Well said, Purely. Yes, um, we are all guilty of overstaying in our lane. Sometimes we want to get that extra bit of gold, get a little risky and try to recall. And next thing you know, you got three people jumping. Yes, <laughs> so That's unfortunate. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention since you were on the topic of the top laner. Yes, uh, I, like I was mentioning uh, Illawi earlier, you know, even if we had Illawi, that could have been a different outcome, perhaps. But Yes, judging by the compositions we had and what we were up against, uh, I would have been heavily reliant on the Nico and Nocturne alts combining and having good timing, and that would be beautifully executed. And we had some really good team fights on both ends. Um, and yes, I agree with you purely. The uh, our bot lane actually played it pretty well, considering. Um, but, you know, there is 5v5. It's not 2v2s. <laughs> it is. It is. And, and I mean, you know, ultimately, I think that you you need to think about what the other team was given as well in this game. You know, first games are obviously very telling about how each team likes to play. Um, and, right. I, and I think you're going to have to look at some switching up some bands, I think, going into the next game as well. You know, if, if we're not if we're not picking the Zach, I think the Zach needs to be banned. I mean, he's obviously a major problem. Um you know, otherwise, I don't think it was too, too bad. Um, I, you know, I think Rakan and Samir is a strong pairing, um, but, you know, you can't ban everything, right? You're going to have to right. sort of pick and choose. And, and I think the Zach enabled a lot of what, you know, the, uh, the Kataba team was trying to do. Um, I honestly think a way that you could switch up the draft. And again, we're, this is all speculation. You know, I don't know what everyone on the uh, on the blue team plays. You know, I can't expect everyone to be able to play any champ whenever. You know, I understand that that's not realistic, but you know, Zach top on their comp in the last game would have been quite good, you know, in terms of follow up on a Nocturne and a Nico, right? I mean, just imagine the, you know, the perfect scenario Nocturne goes in, Nico mm -hmm. follows up with the old Zach over top, you know, I mean, that would have been really, really good and, you know, denies the Zach away from, uh, from the Kataba team. But again, we don't know what everyone plays, um, right? Getting the Zach in the next game, I think the Zach absolutely needs to, to draw a ban for this site. Uh, for this Rams yes, team. I would definitely, and I agree with you. Uh, their, their Zach really just enabled a lot of those executions. And, um, you know, priority of bands, I would definitely rank Samira and Zach. I highly hope we can add that to the band list for this next round. Um, I'm okay personally going against Silas, but when you have, you know, all these champions I can enable or snowball, that's when it gets pretty scary. <laughs> yeah and you know and, and i mean i think in general too the nico silas you know matchup went okay for the rams you know i think nico played fine into it just mainly getting caught off by the zach ganks right i mean the the reason the silas was so monstrous in that game was because of the kills that he was got he was able to get because zach ganked mid a couple of times right we how many times did we see the zach you know e even if he missed the nico you know get him hit him into a minion zach fall or uh silas follows up with the e and, uh, you know, there's a lot of burst damage there, especially without, you know, I'm not sure if um, if Krillin went early Merc treads or not. That would have been very, very valuable for, for him probably in that game uh, if he didn't. But, I mean, that's the kind of thing where it's just very, very difficult, you know, to avoid all the different CC, right? And that gank and Zach has such a long range as well. You know, he can almost jump from the bush to the middle of the lane with his E. So, all I mean, right. it's, it's, it's difficult to avoid, you know, don't get me wrong. I'm not faulting him at all, but I think the Zach was the major problem, at least for me, looking at that game. So I, I'd definitely like to see it, you know, banned and probably one, two, three, you know, in the first three bands, I'd like to see it uh, from the Rams in this next game. Yes, absolutely, for sure. I mean, the blob can Zach appalled his way across. Um, I don't know if this is still possible, but I do remember a couple of years ago, a Zach catapulted from one side of the dragon oh. pit to the other and smited it 
in the middle of the E of the Yeah, uh, I've seen that clip. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so crazy. Um, yes, the range is absolutely absurd. And sometimes yeah. I wonder either they need to reduce the cooldown and make it a little bit shorter, or uh maybe nerf a little bit of the slow on, on his other abilities. I mean, that would probably be a little bit more fair, but you know. Once again, metas come, metas go. Sax just happens to be god god tier right now. Yeah, and I mean um, he's he's fun to watch. So like I don't completely hate him getting some getting some time in the light in the limelight. You know, what I mean, because right. he hasn't been meta for a while. You know, I'm not sure when the last season where he was like super super meta. I do remember briefly there is a time um, at the end of you know last year where he was where he was seeing some play, but in general he hasn't been like meta meta in a while. So I don't mind it. I think teams just need to be more aware um you know and and draft around it and play around it too right so that yeah that they were literally cohesive metaphorically and literally speaking with the blobs you know oh and Um, i mean it was perfect a perfect samira comp right i mean that samira had everything given to her bread you know bread and butter on the table you know i mean mean, she had everything she needed to be successful in that game and Mm -hmm. that's when the samira becomes a problem right when you get given these opportunities to pop off and you know stack up your ult very quickly off of you know your your zach hitting multiple ccs to you know combo from um it's just very very difficult i did actually want to say there is one more thing you know talking less about what we want to see the rams ban going into this game and more about what i'd like to see them pick i didn't hate the nocturne from viper i thought he looked pretty good on it but at least when i played with him two of his signature best champs which may have gotten banned we obviously didn't get to see the ban phase from um you know from either team but Mm -hmm. I'd really like to see him on um, either Jarvan, which is like his signature champ, or Mm -hmm. honestly, his Zin Zhao is quite good. It's a champ that he picked up um, and started playing when I was still on the team. And Mm -hmm. it's it's just his like, it's just his like style champ. You know I mean? He looks very good, um, very comfortable on those kinds of champs. And I think he'll just have more impact, right? I mean, the Nocturne is great if you can get your team, you know, to follow up on your, on your ultimates and on your engages. But if it's not happening, um, I, I would say don't force it too hard. You know what I mean? If the Nico and the Nocturne combination or the Nocturne and the, if you, you know, if you play Oriana, Nocturne and Oriana, also a very oppressive combo. If it's not clicking, if it's not coming together, I think probably just switch off onto something that has more early skirmish power, has the ability to be ganking levels two, three, you know, earlier on, you know, impact these lanes um, from Viper because he's a very, he's probably the center, you know, the centerpiece of this team. You know, he is the key, the key to unlocking this team and making it, um, you know, having it be successful. So, correct. And yes, that's usually the role of the jungle, just the chess pieces on the board and get them, you know, one lane in favor of the other. Um, and another thing I'm uh, purely, I meant to pick your brain about earlier. Uh, I know you mentioned Viper. Uh, he built Eclipse first on Nocturne instead of the uh, experimental hex plate or whatever it's called. Uh, do you think that was just to get early lethality, faster clear speed? What, what what do you think was the reasoning behind that? Well, Eclipse actually in the recent changes, they removed the lethality from it um, and okay. made it and gave it a ton of AD. So now it gives 70 flat AD, uh, oh. 15, 15 ability haste. And it still has the the passive where you get some bonus damage and a shield when, you, shield. when you hit like two ability, two different abilities close together or something on the same target. Um, so it's a very powerful item. Not only that, but it only costs 2,800 gold. So very, very cheap. Um, so it's definitely a strong item. Um, I don't think it matters too, too much because he went hex plate second item anyways. Um, I think the hex plate, I'll be honest. I'm not a, I'm a, I'm a hex plate hater. I think this, this item is not very good. I think if you're, if you're, I, if your first item that you're building only works when you pop your ultimate then it's, you know, it's just not a very good item. And I understand there's certain champs where the whole champ is their ultimate, like Nocturne, like uh, Zeri, you know, champs like this, where right. their ultimate is so, so much of their kit that makes them so strong um, that maybe, you know, I can see, you know, but it's just difficult, right? It's hard to build an item where it's only, at, you know, it's only really getting its full benefit when you're right after you pop your ultimate. So I don't mind the Eclipse first purchase. It basically just says to me that Viper's looking to get active earlier and more often on the map which I'm completely okay with. Like I said, though, I just think it's too difficult um, with Nocturne to be able to find those opportunities. I mean, it's it's just, I think Viper was basically taking the Nocturne pick and trying to, you know, do the best he could, you know, with it when it wasn't, you know, when things weren't working out in terms of the the Nocturne Nico combination. So, but again, like you were mentioning before with the, you know, the ultimate ability haste, it is something to consider, you know what I mean? Having your ultimate up more often 
allows for more plays, you know, to be had, but I don't know. I mean, I, I think it's completely fine, you know, to go Eclipse first. I'm not sure. I haven't played a whole ton of Nocturne, you know, since all the item changes and stuff. So I'm not, I'm not the best person to ask about, you know, optimal builds and things like that, but I'm sure, I'm sure that, uh, you know, Viper has been playing Nocturne and, and probably has, uh, you know, a good idea of, of what he, what he, you know, what feels good to, to build on him. So, yeah, I think it's probably fine. Yeah, I believe, I believe we're getting, yeah, I believe we're doing draft right now. So we'll have to see what both teams, you know, the adaptations that we see from both of these teams um, in the draft. Uh, I'll be curious to see actually what switches up from, from the enemy team as well. I'm, I'm really not too sure if they need to change a whole lot. I mean, obviously their adaptations will probably come mostly from what the Rams decide to change about their own draft, um, as well as, you know, the bands that shift, like we were mentioning, assuming that the, that Zach gets banned in this next game, you know, what are they going to pivot to? Cause I think that it's hard, you know, Zach is a very unique type of champ in that there's not a whole lot of other champs that that do the same stuff that Zach is able to do. I mean, you can you can play another tanky jungler that has, you know, CC like Sejuani would probably would be a good substitute from that game, especially with a Kled and a uh, and a Gar or a, sorry, a Kled and a Silas, both very good with Sejuani. Um, but I mean, it's just you can't ban them all. You know what I mean? There's there's too much there. You only get five bans per team. Um, and it's you know, it's, there's only so much you can do. <laughs> there's only so much you can do. So you really have to pick and choose what is going to be the most, uh, what is going to be the most difficult to deal with, I think for this Rams team, but I'd really like to just see them completely switch it up. You know, I think probably focus less on, on all in on this, you know, this, this perfect engage, right? Like this perfect Nocturne Nico, multiple ults layering over top of each other. It takes a lot of coordination, um, you know, we, you know, the way we talk about it makes it sound very simple, you know, very easy. Oh, they just push their R buttons at the same time and boom, it happens. But there's a lot more that goes into it, right? Making sure that you're, you know, it, it starts, that's the thing about league is like everything builds from something very basic, right? You know, in order to get, you know, you need position, right? With, with both of those, if you're looking for a flank with Nico so that she can be in position to use her ult when Nocturne goes in, right? You need to have your waves pushed right you need to have your mid lane if you let's say they're fighting around Jack, dragon right got to have your mid lane pushed you need to have your bot lane pushed so that you're able to move into the enemy jungle clear out vision look for a spot for nico to uh you know to play from you know and she, that's the one of the great things about nico and what makes her so versatile and that's something that i don't think we saw utilized once actually from krillin in that game is she's able to turn into things like you can turn into a you know you can turn into a ward you can turn into a pink ward in the enemy jungle and it's very unlikely i mean if they if they check the bushes and start clearing you well then all of a sudden you're in a bit of trouble but you're not going to show up on the mini map at all if they if they put a ward in that bush or anything like that so i mean you know the, the, these are the kinds of things we need to see more of if if they're going to continue to try and, and look for this you know these combination but I, i'd be perfectly fine with them just playing to their strengths you know picking champs if they're up you know picking champs that they're very comfortable on individually um because, I mean, the bot lane looked pretty solid. Like I said, you know, the Kaisa and Nami is not a typical pairing you see, but they both played their champions very well. And I, and I think if you had a stronger top side in that game, um, you know, it, it looks a lot different. But yeah, I believe I believe they're getting into the draft right now. So okay. So I think I believe they're going into the draft right now. They're drafting in uh in draft full, so they do it ahead of time. So that's why, like in the first game when we when we loaded into draft, we uh you know, all the champs were already selected and we were just waiting to for a spectator delay. Um, so we will have to see how it goes. We'll have to see how it goes. Um, I'm, like I said, I'm hoping those adaptations are made by the Rams. I'm sure that they have, um, you know, coach helping them out with their decision making process. But it can be difficult sometimes, you know, especially with more limited champ pools. Um, you know, not everyone. It's very common that people are 
are going to lean more towards playing comfort over, you know, playing stuff that works well together or playing things that are meta, right? Because you might not have as much practice on those things. You don't want to play something that you're not comfortable on. And, and, and I understand that, but I've always been a big believer in, uh, in playing in playing what's strong. So I've, I've always been, I've been, I'm, I'm one of those guys that likes to grind out whatever the meta is, um, and, and figure it out and, and play a ton of it. So that way, um, you know, I, I can help out my team. I was, when I actually, when I played for the varsity team, i moved around a lot of different positions played. Actually, I played every position on the varsity LOL team, except for jungle. <laughs> it's the one role that I was not, um, not privileged enough to, uh, to play. Thank goodness. Um, but Okay, it sounds like we are going to send it to a short break while we wait for this draft to conclude, but don't go anywhere because when we return, game number two. All right, and we are back. Uh, appeared we had a couple little technical issues earlier. <laughs> uh, looks like we are already locking in the uh, champions. Purely, what are your thoughts on this? I'm loving what I'm seeing as far as Viper. Excuse me for a second. I'm sorry, I had some water go down the wrong hole. But uh, yeah, I like <laughs> the, I like this comp from the Rams so much better uh, than their previous comp. I think it just it just everything about this is comfort you know what i mean like every single all five of them are playing champions well i mean i'm not like i said the newcomers i'm not as sure about because i haven't you know i don't i'm not as familiar with them I haven't seen them play a whole ton but this jungle and bot lane is like you know it's just like the this is exactly what i think of when i think of these guys um right and so it's and it's it's definitely a strong you know it's a lot stronger in scaling a lot stronger in terms of uh you know team fighting i think as well so and I, and I like pretty much all of the matchups as well. I mean, Lucian Milio, very, very scary. Um, actually, most people considering it consider it the number one bot lane right now um, in mm. the game. So it, it is definitely, that's going to be the main point, I think, that we're going to want to watch um, in terms of how it goes early. But if they're able to weather that storm, I mean, I really like what uh, what the Rams have this game. Absolutely. I mean, <laughs> this looks like the dream, uh, dream team. And honestly, I know we were discussing earlier, you know, pain remains playing, you know, tanky top laners, but looks like we've got Aatrox on the top lane this for this round. So I'm actually really curious how this all plays out. And yes, um, I'm also familiar with Vipers Jarvan. Very scary, especially the full AD version, even scarier. Um, obviously, we've got Krillin on Vigar for this round. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with Vigar. Yeah, like you said, uh, Jinx and Vigar are very scaly, extremely scaly champions. Vigar, instead of the Nico ult, we're going to be more dependent on Vigar's cage, the E. But what's even more beautiful about our comp is, you know, we've got Viper's ult, the Cataclysm, the wall, you know. And then on top of that, Krillin could just, you know, toss a cage after the ult expires. And then if Braum wants to throw an ult on top of that, 
you've got a beautiful, beautiful execution of crowd control. Yeah, and, and I think the main difference, too, in this game versus the last game is that the Rams have the range advantage as well. I mean, the Jinx with her Rockets with Lethal stacked as well. I'm not sure if Want to Be There likes building rapid fire on Jinx either, but you're just going to have so much, you know, Annie is pretty, like, short to medium range. Lucian, pretty short to medium range. Um, even with the cozy campfire, you know, um, enhancing his range a little bit. I mean, you're really not going to have a whole lot of threat um, as long as Grim does his job well. You know, the cages from from Krillin are positioned well. Um, and I think that's going to be the main thing. I think that, you know, positioning in these fights is going to be incredibly important, especially without having like a true, true front line um, for this Rams team other than the Braum, um, you know, Aatrox probably will build lethality i'll imagine and uh mm -hmm. and jarvin i mean it kind of just depends you know he sort of builds like a bruiser now at least the most recent jarvin builds that i've seen you know they like sundered sky um they like triforce know, things like that uh mm -hmm. triforce in the jungle maybe i mean we might